Welcome to our weekly show for the National Association of Independent Medical Practices. You can find us at naimp.org. NAIMP is an organization focused on helping independent medical practices become more successful by providing innovative discussions, networking with like-minded professionals, and opportunities for growth, education, and increased revenue. Check out our website today at naimp.org. Hello, this is Shirley Cress Dudley, and welcome to today's show. I would like to introduce our guest speaker for today, Ellen J. Harris. Ellen leads 10-year-old business accelerated company, an idea-driven corporation specializing in intellectual capital, assets, and property. She brings 30 years experience business expertise working with Fortune 500 companies, applying her unique portfolio of technology, business, and marketing to guide startups, entrepreneurs, and small business owners through the challenges of business ownership. Ellen is a contributor to the Small Business Examiner at examiner.com. She's the author of Healing, Health, and Happiness, How to Be a Smart Medical Traveler, also, Business at the Speed of You, 25 Proven Revenue Models for Business Owners. Ellen serves as consultant coach at the NYU STEM School of Entrepreneurship and facilitator of the Small Business Case Study Program at the Lubin School of Business in New York City. So we'd like to welcome you today, Ellen, and her presentation is Five Keys to Increase Client Attraction. Thank you so much, Shirley, for this opportunity. Hello, everyone. Today I'm going to speak with you about five keys to increase client attraction, how independent medical practice owners create meaningful patient relationships, connect with clients who need them, and sustain thriving businesses. Our agenda today will be a brief overview. I will speak to you about specialness, brand influence, relationship client value, compassion customer service, communication marketing, fill the need, value systems. I want to begin with where small business optimism is in the United States right now. A year ago, it was 95%. But as you see, in June of this year, there is a drop to 91.1%. And when you see this, the question is, why? First of all, in June 2011, 1,000 new tax levies were applied to small business owners across the United States. That's up 146 levies from what I reported in, in March, March 2015. That is a significant drop in what people are expecting. I'm going to introduce myself, tell you who I am, and why this presentation. I am Ellen J. Harris. I lead the Business Accelerated Company, which is an executive management consulting firm. I've been a business owner since 2005-2006. I offer the Small Business Examiner, and I'm a designer of the Digital Revenue Business Models. I facilitate small business case studies at the Lugan School of Business, and I hold three master's degrees. Why is this important to me? Because it's important to you. And I'm on a mission to bring this information to as many business owners across the United States as I possibly can. I'm going to begin with specialness which is a direct impact on your brand influence. I like quotes, 
and I hope you will appreciate this quote from Dr. Joyce Brothers. Listening, not imitation, may be the sincerest form of flattery. What does this mean to you as a independent medical practitioner? How do you begin the process of building that consistent flow of patients? One of the things you may have observed is that people now want to have a deeper connection with you if you are a business owner. They do not want to feel like they are, you are only interested in them as a commercial transaction. They do not want to be your share of wallet. So how do you overcome that? particularly if you utilize technology or you must use some technology like pay-per-click. What is it, what mechanism do you need to employ in order for your audience to feel connected? In today's market, what professionals must think about is how sensitive they are to people. One of the things we want to first think about is imagine you're meeting people face to face and so the questions become what's your favorite thing to do on the weekend or after work? Do you bike? Do you hike? People enjoy talking about flowers, landscapes, gardens, pets, children, even grandchildren. And these are some conversation starters that you might employ as you ask your potential patient about their particular medical need. How much active listening do you employ in your independent medical practice? Listening is critical. You must understand what their issues are. You need to know it from a medical standpoint, but in that, I call it semi-personal discussion about pets and flowers, people will reveal things that may be indicators to their medical challenge. So what is your first step? Your first step is to demonstrate that you care about your patients. And why is that important? Because in this presentation specifically about the data, small business owners are reporting an increase in revenue between 2010 and two in 2015. But if you observe, in 2010 it was 25 uh, percent increase in revenue. But you'll notice a two-point drop between 2014 and 2015. When I did the analysis, why that drop is occurring is because of the lack of connection. Your audience your patients, your clients, your customers, they want to be heard. And I recommend that by listening and helping that person feel like they're the only person in the room will make a big difference in how you connect with that potential client, customer. So you want to use active listening skills. And active listening is simply, as they speak, if there's something you're not clear on, you want to say something like, when you say X, do you mean Y or something else, perhaps? Help me understand. People enjoy answering questions about themselves. You want to do your very best to exercise sincerity. And you can't fake that. 
that comes from a real place, also known as your heart. So your rule of thumb is you don't feel it, you don't say it. So what's, so what's possible for you? The patient and poor. The KLT factor is know, like, and trust, which we are experiencing right now. We know a lot of what we're seeing on the national stage. We're not sure if we like the person or we trust them. Those are two critical factors. And that's incumbent upon you to increase the trust and the like factor. Like comes about when you ask the person about themselves. Trust comes about when you're asking them more relevant questions to who they are as a person in context of whatever their medical medical condition may be. They may have been referred to you. And suppose in your initial diagnostic, you discover that this is truly a potential client. So you ask at that point, when we start, is there someone in your network or in your community that you believe would benefit from my service? Even if they don't have the condition that's similar to yours, I am happy to refer them within my network to people I know who can help them. This is not only demonstrating your sincere factor, but it also helps you establish your sincerity and you are developing a long-term patient. In this context, you are distinguishing your business brand, not your personal brand, but your business brand, and there is a difference. Your practice demonstrates how you perceive your client relationships, and that brings us to the relationship client value. Patient care and client value are synonymous in my mind. I am not a medical practitioner, but I've worked with medical practitioners, and I understand what it means to manage those key client relationships. So Dr. Dwayne Dreyer said, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And that's what I am advocating today. Now, in this series of data, you'll notice nurses, pharmacists, medical doctors engender the highest level of honesty and ethical standards. If that's true for those three disciplines, you have the opportunity to make that part of your business as well. Notice, Notice those who are not high on the honesty, ethical standard factors. That's your advertising professionals, and that's because of marketing hype. And of course, business executives, uh, which I struggle around, <laughs> and of course, members of Congress. So the better able you are to connect personally with your audience, the better for you. And don't forget, asking, what's your favorite thing to do on the weekend or after work? Do you garden? Uh, you know, I love irises. Do you grow those? You would be amazed of how, of how you can develop conversations with people. So you want to exercise rigorous understanding of your patient needs because sometimes it's not always physical. And this is not an area where you want to use um, anything artificial or perfunctory, really demonstrate the caring side of who you are to your patient. And you don't want to use salesmanship in your patient care and nurturing. It's that personal focus 
are you marrying? Really so long? When is your anniversary? This is data you want to collect so that perhaps you can send a card of recognition of their life event because it demonstrates that you remember. And when someone remembers your birthday, your anniversary, uh, maybe you just had a new grandchild or a child, people remember that. Now, it takes time to understand, empathize, and feel what that patient wants. And as long as you've been in your practice, you have a really good sense of this. So you know it's about them, their context, not yours. What are the results for you? Value is critical. It's value in your focus. It's a value-driven practice. And it's always value-based. Value and what does value look like? It's exceeding their expectations. It's giving a new twist or spin on the wow factor. So that when they open their mailbox, their physical mailbox, and there's a card in there, from you recognizing something that's happening in their life there as well. That practitioner remembered me. It will go a long way. The next area that's critical for your practice is your customer service because that's the core of compassion and not everyone is customer service focused. Compassion is meaningful. It's, it's like, like when, when little children fall or they scratch a finger and they come to you and you kiss it and make it all better, compassion. Compassion goes deeper in much larger levels, but I'm giving a simplified example to trigger the insight within you. Mahatma Gandhi said, you may never know what results some of your actions. But if you do nothing, there will be no results. And I'm, and I'm sure, sure you can appreciate that. So, so how client fit is your support team? team? You really want people working with you and for you who care about others. That will come across. It will also brand your practice. And that's what you want more than anything else. When they see your brand, when they hear the name of your practice, they want to think caring. How well does your team demonstrate patient care for your patients? When they walk in the door, do your, does your team or your person at the front desk give a wave and a big hi? That is so meaningful. You never want a patient to walk into your office and they are not acknowledged. That is the first step in turning that patient off. You want to create what I define as exceptional affluence. I don't care what the person's economic level is, help them feel like they're affluent. They'll go home and tell their relatives, I really feel like I'm a big deal when I go to see, and they may say your name. Now, the most important customer experience interaction attributes. Accuracy and quality of information provided. Here's a big secret. People love to learn. Even if they have no background in your specific skill, the fact that you bring them information that they did not know about, even if they don't understand it, it doesn't matter. They will listen with such rapt attention to hear it because they're learning. You want to recognize that as something that you want to employ in your practice. Zappos. Zappos became a million dollar company because their customer service people, their job was to sell shoes but they sold much more than shoes. 
people would get on the phone, women in particular, and they would talk about a shoe and how it looks and how it feels, and I wore it to the dance or I wore it to the beach, and people came to buy one pair, they walked away with six pairs, customer service. Now, I want to share a quick antidote, anecdote, sorry, about a Midwest dental practice. This gentleman graduated from NYU Stern in New York with a medical degree and an MBA. And he wanted to go to the Midwest because he believed that's where the affluent market was. So he went there and connected back with me and he said, I don't know where, where to begin. I said, find the most affluent wall, mall in the state. And he did. He selected a mall that had a limousine service, a nail salon, and a hair salon. Um, I mention that because, as he mentioned, all of the other uh, stores in that mall, I said, why not do a partnership with the limousine service, the hair salon, and the nail, nail salon, and create a affluent package. Uh, call it something interesting, something that will, will attract them. So he called it your stress-free service, your stress-free dental service. And what happened is when the person quarterly came for their dental appointment, there was a limousine to pick them up. Also, they were taken to the hair salon, and after they had their hair done, there was a the dental assistant who came to get them and walked them across the mall so that they could have their dental appointment. Once they finished the dental appointment, they were then escorted by the nail salon specialist so that they could have their nails done. Now, that affluent person invested in the service, but it was worth it to them because one day, every quarter, they felt extremely special and that they were investing in a, in a service that did not take advantage of them but helped them feel relaxed one day out of, out of three months. So what's possible for you? Your patient client focused team is critical to your growth. The word of mouth increases naturally. Premium quality service and value-based fees so that people feel that the value they receive from your practice is worth every penny that they invest in working with you. Now, communication marketing. This is an area that is troubling across, across the United States. States. Because, because the, question the question becomes, how do we connect? How do we connect? Because we forget that we're dealing with devices. There's a, there's a tablet between you and I. There's a computer between you and I. There's a smartphone between you and I. So how do we personalize these things? We remember that it's the basics. Martha, Martha Sheridan, Sheridan said, said, everything ultimately comes down to trust. And you cannot build trust through a smartphone. At some point, you have to dial a phone number on that smartphone. In this data set, to what extent do you trust the following forms of advertising or recommendations? The largest piece of data is in the recommendations for people you know. Now this is all tied in to the word of mouth, the buzz that you generate through your practice. You want to know that when someone leaves your office and they run into someone, who, you know, do you know a good uh, wealth care, uh, uh, health care provider, wellness? Do you know someone can who can help me think about or, or have a system where I can lose weight. And they'll say, oh, you know, 
I know this person who's part of uh, the NAIPM organization. I will connect you. This is what you want. That's word of mouth. That's the buzz. So the truth comes about through referrals, and it increases your longer patient engagements. Relationship plus education equals longer-term patients. Now, now, the, the anti-tactics anti no longer work. work. So, in you've seen this in the marketing, and it says, uh, "Oh, but wait, there's more. Uh, limited time offer. Oper operators standing standing by. Don't use those. What, what you want, want to use is something, something that you've thought about very, very deeply. What results, what results can your audience expect to receive from you? What's the end game?" for the market when they work with you, what's the purpose of your results and the people who serve you and your business. So you want to assure that you become your own patient. What, ins what inspires you? What makes you feel better as a practitioner? This is the kind of analysis that when you do for yourself, you, you will bring, bring it to your patients. patients. So, so what's, what's possible, possible for you? You, you have, have to reinvent your message. message. If there's any uh, cold or totally clinical, put some human language in that. Uh, demonstrate your kindness. Okay, you want to image your brand. What does your brand stand for? We stand for caring and concern about the people that come to us. And then you want I want to reinterpret your business future. I always think of markets. Your target market is just not one. I think of women. We're professionals, we're homemakers, we're mothers. Think of the multiple categories that we fit into, and your target market is most likely more than one. Now, I'm going to wrap up with how to fill the need and designing value systems. Value systems are critical. They certainly make a difference. And you want to think about that because Ted Rubin said, your value doesn't decrease based on someone's inability to see your worth. Now that might sound counterintuitive to what I'm describing, but people will be able to see your value if you demonstrate it and put it forward. Upcoming, there are the, the number of uninsured in the United States is growing. This presents to you a market opportunity because they are not all elderly. And so if you're targeting the elder, elderly market, you also want to look at that generation just above the millennials. The millennials will come to you at some point. They are the 25 to 35 demographic. It's that 40 to 45, and then 45 to 50. But I believe your sweet spot is between 40 and 45, which will help you capture this specific segment of the market that is not elderly. Value-based permission digital systems. That's your cell phone, your smart, you, you want to call people. It's your email. You want to drip the messages, specifically those things that may be data-centric. I thought you might be interested in knowing or learning about a new survey or a new data set that's just been released to us. And in that report, is this segment of information that will be helpful to you. Text, Text reminders and downloads are also helpful. Now, now the, the most active digital health areas are San Francisco, New York City, and Los, Los Angeles. So look through this and see if some area is close to where you are. So the value systems help your patient fill the need to understand the methods they use and the expected outcome of your services. 
and you want to share with them how your methods help them. The compound annual growth rate for the digital healthcare market is in telehealth. I always think of WebMD. So if you don't have a digital component in your business, I would start with something simple. If you are thinking about text, uh, slick text is a way to help people put in a number and download something from you. So you want to give your patients the opportunity to be in the moment. Help them imagine what it would be like to work with you and put them in the moment of the results of, they can, of what they can receive from working with you. It will improve their quality of life. One last piece about the digital health market, it's the mobile. And all of us now are mobile. Leverage that to your advantage to be able to connect with your audience. So, the value systems establish a patient's buying criteria, and your criteria is what the patient can expect to receive in the outcome of the services you're, you will provide. It's not just about you will feel better. Things will happen for you that you did not expect to the positive. Now, what is possible for you? It's the distinctive areas of your medical practice that you want to bring forward to your audience. It's a mixture of technology and social engagement. And it's the value portfolio that you establish around the reinterpreted, reimagined services that you offer. I'm not saying uh, separate yourself from your training. No, I'm saying add some extra measure of value that is appreciable by your audience. I'm Ellen J. Hess. Ellen. I am founder of the Ellen, thank you very much. So to get in touch with you more, they would go to info at business-accelerated.com. Um, and I believe you had a you wanted to give them a copy of the slide presentation, and how would they do that? They would send an email to info at businessaccelerated.com, and they would use NAIPM presentation in subject line. Uh, part of this gift also includes the source of materials that I use for this presentation. Okay, super. So um, if you'd like to get a copy of the slide presentation, info at business-accelerated.com. And then also uh, I, you can listen to this on iTunes, the podcast. If you'd like to watch the entire presentation, go to naimp.org. And we thank you, Ellen, for your presentation and for our listeners. We hope to, um, for you to come back again soon. Thank you.